I saved this jumper out of a rag bag. Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and t today I'm wearing a hat, which can only mean one thing. I could not be bothered doing anything with my hair this morning. It has been a while since I made a video of this ilk. Once again, I've been riddled with that question as to whether mindless content where I'm not talking about books is worth anything and if it's worth your time. But at the end of the day, I feel like I'm kind of known for talking nonsense by now. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this jumper was saved from a rag bag at work. Basically, I, saw, I mentioned to my manager how I was looking for ugly clothes and I, well, I think I'm calling them ugly jumpers. I don't know what else to call them. And I went into the back and she had pulled this out of a rag bag and said she thought of me. And honestly, I can understand why. We've got dark red in here. We've got blue in here. And both of them are like house colours here, aren't they? Brought it home, tried it on and knew straight away, yes, this is a Charlie jumper. In fact, this might be the actual first day I've worn it because as soon as I bought it, we had a small, tiny amount of a heat wave. <laughs> and then this morning I woke up and it was still a bit chilly. I'd bought some blankets from work because when Rambo was dying, um, he ruined all of our blankets. So I thought I needed to get some more in for winter. And so I've had that on and then I've had this jumper on just to make this video. Um, so what have I been up to since last we spoke? Well, not much reading has been going on. I was reading the same book for quite a while there and I have recorded a video about that so I'm not going to mention it here. I recently acquired an Italian dictionary from work and the reason behind this is simple. I have been working on my Italian on Duolingo for a few months now and this most recent level that I have reached I'm finding incredibly difficult. I thought that I would get an actual dictionary and try and find some of the knowledge I need to be able to get through this chapter. Also the last fortnight I had overtime at the shop and for whatever reason when I have overtime I find myself unable to settle to anything when it's the way it is. So I usually work three days a week, Friday, Saturday and Monday and they feel like a nice straight road and then I'm done. And once I'm done on the Monday, uh, I know most people start the week on a Monday but since it's like my last day until Friday, I always call it the last day. And most people can switch off, I think, and forget their jobs. But for whatever reason, when I was doing the days I was, where I was in Monday, off Tuesday, in Wednesday, off Thursday, that sort of thing, I couldn't settle to anything on the Tuesdays and the Thursdays because I felt like I had no time to get anything done. I was trying to focus on my reading. I was trying to focus on watching booktube videos. Still behind on tons of booktube, as we all are. And writing did happen, but very sparsely. And I have been chatting a bit more about writing which is something I always warn against because I feel like if you talk about writing you're never actually going to be getting the writing done. But some small amount of writing did happen and yes a tiny tiny bit of writing happened on the children's book that I avoided talking to anybody about because I've been working on the rewrite of the children's book for nearly three years. Technically not three because I also wrote An Heir to Murder and Doris Ahoy in that time so my focus hasn't always been on that. That's always been a bit of a palate cleanser but I did write a small amount of a chapter on the children's book and I was enthusiastic about it because I felt like I'd cr finally cracked the chapter I was working on. Also, whilst we have been away, whilst I have been away from you, I have finally seen two of my friends that I haven't seen since before lockdown. If you didn't know, I have steered clear of leaving the house for anything other than walks with my sister or work since March. I have yet to go into another supermarket. I have yet to do anything that isn't. Well, yesterday I got a flu jab. That was it. I went into a pharmacy with my mask on and me and my father were the only people in there. I went to see Joy, Joy Winkler, last Thursday, which was the first time we'd seen each other 
in forever. And I went to her house and told her hers was the first house that I had visited in all this time. And so I gave her all of the books of hers that I'd had back, plus lent her a book that I talked about lending before all this. And she's given me some books to peruse that she'd been saving for me. So we have Your Voice Crosses the Ocean, which is the Foyle Young Poets of the Year. And this is just a nice little short book, which will be nice to read after I just read a 744 page one. Then she's given me another copy of Poetry Review. This was going to be part of a video that I was going to record because if you remember, at the start of this year I talked about all the magazines I'd acquired and still hadn't read yet and I have a few copies of Poetry Review now that have come from Joy and I just haven't read and I should because poetry is something I'm trying to get more into and I ended up in Butcher's Dog magazine last year and I, to be fair, everywhere else they submitted rejected me but still. And then we have a copy of The North which are poems from writers in the North. And they have yet to figure out how I can submit to them, or if I have submitted to them before they have rejected me. Another nice thing that I got this morning was my copy of the Rialto. But it was pouring down with rain today, so this is already water damaged and will have to go on the radiator before I can read it. But I did see that two poets that I have heard of before who happen to be friends with writer friends of mine are in here. So that mean, makes me feel as though I have some sort of connection to them. I apologise for touching my hair. Then some more books from Joy. We have The Girls of Slender Means by Muriel Spark because Joy read this, really liked it and thought that I would like it. She also said it's quite short so since I was reading a rather long book that I might appreciate that. Then Joy has read Birdcage Walk by Helen Dunmore, a book that I have had to, on my shelves waiting to be read for over a year now. And she read that and didn't like it, so she decided to lend me The Lie by Helen Dunmore, because she says that this is better than that one. And then I mentioned how I keep buying up Elizabeth Taylor, so she's lent me Elizabeth Taylor's Complete Short Stories, which will be nice to read, considering there are only... 626 pages of stories in here and the first story is 53 pages long. So after seeing after seeing Joy on Thursday, on Sunday I went to meet Abercrombie and ours was an open air visit. I went to a house and we got on the canal and we walked back in the direction of my house and it was a nice four hour long jaunt along the canal, a stop for a picnic and then a walk and she showed me how I could have been getting on the canal a lot faster because she showed me this road that I didn't realise led to a path that gets onto the canal and would have added that bit extra to my journey that would have meant I had a, always had a nice hour-long walk as opposed to when I want to turn it into a circuitous journey so I have to get off it a lot earlier. And Abercrombie gave me a voucher for books because it had been so long since we've seen each other and we realised it was before the launch of An Heir to Murder and she was about to go on holiday before that so she missed the launch and then everything happened. So she gave me my birthday present which is this voucher and I still haven't spent it because I've not figured out what I'm going to spend it on yet. It was great. Vegan food on the canal and we saw a dead rabbit that had drowned in the water which just I should have taken as an omen of things to happen this week, but I didn't. And it was nice weather. A fly didn't get the message that I was a vegetarian and flew straight down my throat as I was talking and I ended up coughing and spluttering, which is not a look that people want at the moment. I thought that they were going to jump in the canal to avoid me. They didn't, but it didn't stop me thinking they might. It's strange to have only seen two friends in so long. And whilst we have been communicating, it's different when you see them in the flesh and realise you've not talked about half of the stuff that's actually going on in your life. And now there's the chance that it's going to be another six months before we get to see each other again. And, you know, I'd already lost a bit more weight since they last saw me. Can you imagine if I lose the same amount now? Ooh, they won't recognise me. It has happened. There has been a moment of a person not recognising me.
because of the weight loss, which I don't understand because I don't think that it's considerable enough that I look like a different person. I've even got the same name, the same receding hairline. Either way, that happened and now it's a Wednesday and it's the first Wednesday I've had off in three weeks, which some people might think, Charlie, you only work three days anyway, you've worked four days, why is that an imposition to you? And I'm like, it's just, it's who I am. For whatever reason, I just don't have the mental wherewithal anymore to deal with the public. It's just who I am as a person. I get on with people enough when I see them, but I get home and I feel completely drained of energy because I've had to converse with people for a certain amount of time. <sighs> Which sounds weird to everybody, but there we go. Something else that I've been getting back into is buying Doctor Who books. This is the Gallifrey Chronicles by Lance Parkin. A few years ago, I had a rather large collection of Doctor Who books in a box and I hadn't looked at them in years. Going through something of the emotional time, I chose to donate all of the books to the charity shop. This was a mistake. They made tons of money and I realised quite soon after that I'd actually not wanted to get rid of them. Um, so over the last three or four years, I have been reacquiring the books. I started on eBay with an extremely large collection of somebody else's that I bought for £30. The postage was £30 and I got my nan to pay that for a present. And then I made £60 back off two of the books. So I didn't do too badly. But specifically, I wanted to collect the books that were released by the BBC that were all the eighth Doctor Adventures. And I decided to donate some of the books that weren't selling for me through eBay at work. And because I was looking up prices of them, I just thought, well, let's see if there's anything cheap on here that goes with my interests. And so I made a few bids on things cheaply, not thinking I'd win them. And I mean, very cheaply, dirt cheap at some ta some points, just one ninety nine 99 here and there, thinking nothing of it. And well, I won four of them and they're all in the post on the way to me now. Then I realised I actually have quite a large collection of Doctor Who books again, probably bigger than I had before. I have no space for them in my room. And also, I still haven't read them because there are 73 and I don't have them in any sort of order. I think I have the first nine in an order and then others dotted around here and there that it amounts to about 40 books. And they're only incredibly short volumes, so I could probably get through three a day. I'm just not sure what my end game is here, because it's going to cost me a lot to eventually build up the collection of 73 books. I mean, say I only had to pay £2 on average, that's 140 quid, isn't it? Um, but most of them nowadays do end up being more expensive than that. I've just got lucky with these. It just seems like a nice pastime whilst I'm stuck at home. Um, I did wonder about the state of my health if I was back scrolling through eBay again, trying to acquire something that still feels quite nostalgic because I'm not sure I'm the biggest fan of the TV show, but as a teenager I would get these books out of the library or borrow them from friends, buy them from Poundland. I don't know, it seems strange to be reacquiring them at the age of 28 and question why. Am I doing it for nostalgic purposes? Am I ever going to read them? Is it just because I want them? I had a rather extensive collection of Star Trek books as well, but um, they were some of the books that went first because they never got read. Apart from one that saw the return of Captain Kirk. Turned out he'd never been dead. And if that's a spoiler for Star Trek Generations, I'm sorry. But I'm not sorry. Have I acquired any new books recently? I can't say as I have apart from things I borrowed or bought cheaply. So no new books, new jumper. Um, everybody's fine at home. As I say, I had my flu jab yesterday. I've also got some more inhalers in because I just want to be ready pre-winter. And everybody knows that asthmatics have this problem as we head into winter where the asthma gets worse. We, you know, I have a f body that's falling apart anyway. So I just know that alongside the pain that I'm going to feel from being breathless and this flaming chill and having to wear a mask, great stuff. 
I'm also going to have the problem with my bones because my bones don't like the cold and it's just, ugh. Whilst I love autumn and I love winter and simply because I think it's just, I think it just comes from spending more time at home and f not feeling, you know, feeling as though we're coming to an end of something. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know why I say I like autumn and winter so much because that is the time when my health is at its worst. Yes, there have been more trepidatious moments recently. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but they definitely been there where I've been concerned about the state of my asthma as we head towards winter, especially with the current state of affairs internationally. The idea of like my bones, I actually considered looking up pens for people with arthritis because whilst I haven't been diagnosed with issues with my wrists or hands, I am finding it, this is my favourite sort of pen, it's just a Bic, just a normal standard Bic and usually for Christmas or birthdays family members will just buy me a load of these pens because they're my favourites. Um, I like to keep it simple. I'm going to tell a tiny story here. As we well, 20 minutes in anyway, who cares? Last year, I tripped over my shoes and nearly fell down the stairs. I threw my hands down to grab hold of the banisters and kind of slammed them a bit hard. Ever since then, I've had a bit of a problem with my wrists. But also, since the problem started, I've not been able to go to the doctors because of the, again, what's going on in the world. The last few months since I've been writing Doris, and most people know I write them longhand, I have had a bit of pain and had to stop writing by hand a bit and wait for the pain to diminish. And I don't know whether it comes from the pen being too thin, so I've been wondering whether I ought to get a thicker pen but then I worry what it'll do to my handwriting. And it feels particularly like an old man sort of situation then to be seeking a thicker pen just because my hands and my wrists are too painful to do anything. It also comes with typing as well. Ugh. But none of you need to know this, really. You've all got your own things to worry about without me here talking about how I'm struggling to write. Yeah, I mean... There's always a way, isn't there? Like, there's much less fortunate people than me, aren't there? I am actually serious. If you do know of any thicker pens than this that write well, let me know. I think that's it. I think we're going to leave it there. I've caught up with you. I've rambled on. I've not really talked about anything. Talked about books. Talked about nothing. Talked about writing. Told you the family's well. How are you doing? Seriously, how are you doing? Are you well? What have you been up to? What are you reading? What are you writing? What are you watching? What are you listening to? Quite a few writer friends have got in touch with me about this, so I think it might be pertinent to your in interest as well. I'll leave a link in the description to a um, panel discussion with some of the founders and people who have worked at Virago, the publishers, over the last 50 or so years. And it's talking about the origins of Virago and the struggles that they had. And apparently it's really great. I've yet to listen to it, but it's been recommended enough that I think that we all ought to go and watch that. Well, no, I think we all ought to go and listen to that. I had been watching something on the television for once in my life, but I've completely forgotten what that was. Um, so I'll leave it there. I hope that you got something out of this video, but I'm pretty sure it was just sheer boredom. And until next time, that is all. <gasps>